Hey everybody, Belong from MMPCTech.com and the ModZoo.com community. I am the head silverback gorilla and co-founder of the community. If you haven't heard of the ModZoo.com, we're a group of PC enthusiasts into PC building, customizing, liquid cooling, overclocking, scratch building, or just repairs, whatever. Just if you have a love for personal computers, you're welcome to join our community. And if you're working on a project where you've got sponsored items like the video cards, water blocks, or whatever, and you want to have banners to the manufacturer because it is sponsored and you want to promote the manufacturer products, you're welcome to share your work log on our form. There is no fees. So come on over. Now this is the second segment, the MZ2 Genesis case mod, the genesis of a mod monkey. And I'm working on this with Modzu staffers, Mosquito, and Captain Curry Sauce. We're going to go over to Mosquito's place. These guys are going to share their initial plan for what type of hardware they want to put in this PC build. And we hope that uh, Origin is going to supply this hardware because they offered it uh, as some type of arrangement for possibly giving the system away. Although we think that they should keep this system and use it for a display at uh, future events to show people the kind of cool stuff you can do with the Genesis Full Tower or the Millennium if you're looking for ideas for case modifications or whatever just to inspire people that may buy this case. After that we're going to come back to MNPC Tech and I'm going to show you how I created some custom louvers for the front door because if you, re if you saw the first episode Captain had suggested the idea of louvers in the front door because we all felt that the case kind of has an exotic sports car look about it. So I'll show you an overview of how I did those and uh, that will be it. And I think the next segment is we'll start looking at uh, what kind of custom paint we're going to give this thing. We're here going over the paperwork for the hardware. Yep, we're going to adopt, hopefully, for this origin build. And after looking at our options, we have kind of decided to go with the, the Asus Z97 Maximus 7 Ranger, uh, i7-4790K. For GPUs, we're going to go with GTX 980s. Uh, memory, I know we're still kind of dabbling a bit, but we would like to go with four sticks or whatever. You know. Fill up those slots. Fill up those slots. Have four of them. <laughs> Use them. Yes. <laughs> uh, power supply wise, I think 850 should be more than enough with that system. So we're going to go with the Corsair yeah. RM850. I know if you spec it out on the Origin site, that's the recommended one. Okay. Is the Corsair 850. Okay. And for SSDs, we're going to go with Samsung 850 Pros, 256 gigs. So that's the hardware. And we what we did was we looked at what Origin has to offer on the normal bill so we decided to stick with something which they offer that way you know it's something that they can recreate I don't know you know if somebody likes it be like oh I want similar hardware they have it well and if they're the ones giving it away I don't know if there's gonna be a warranty or anything like that yeah but it just know. makes it easy to support for them I guess yeah if something goes wrong yeah. they have access to all the stuff in it yeah. but and I know for the G for the water cooling stuff we had talked about it and I think what we ended up saying was it will, we'll have to see what Origin would like us to use. We are open to whoever their partners are. So I know EK is one, Coolidge is the other one. I think we would like to do a EK build. I think that's what we initially said. But depending on you know whatever Origin would like us to use, we'll go with Coolidge or EK. So final loop details no that has those have not been planned we need to get the hardware in first yeah and then plan from there and just see what we can get i guess yeah I mean, figure out figure out what we have access to and then and then go from there yep should be fun should be now, do we talk about the child we're adopting from cambodia or no wait you guys don't need don't to know, know that what you're talking about. It's monkey business. Yeah. So cut hair, do like a light box, kind of, and have our one of our, I don't know, one, whichever monkey. So we have two monkeys here. 
This is my crude effort at trying to be cool as Bill. <laughs> with the battering effects. Monkey in the middle. That's cool. So, I like it actually. If we clean up the inside the rest of the way. I, I like the, I like that uh, too. The outline of the... Yeah, with the... Uh, Kind of the silver outline yeah there. i think we that's a good idea the inside is just because the grills all the honeycomb grills on the case are going to remain black matte black okay so so do that were so you thinking painting that black too or leaving yeah, that silver? you can you can this is your call guys which I you whatever you want to do then just to be fun so that idea other thing we're going to do is we're going to make a tiny little license plate something mod zoo i don't, know. I don't know maybe our initials or something like that you know we could do org wait that's kind of might go somewhere else but, <laughs> <laughs> but i don't know some kind of little license because our theme is car you know it's like we're going after it's a car because we look at the case it looks like a fast car so car based theme and it got it has to have a license plate so a side mounted license plate like a you know nice sports car because center is too cool Although this actually does almost look like a license plate too. It does, yeah, the mod zoo. Except for that the letters are stacked, but yeah. Hey, there's a new idea, Bill. You can make uh, mod zoo license plate <laughs> frames. <laughs> <laughs> you get a low car and yeah. the monkey's head is sticking above the hood. You don't want to put the monkey in the center here. Well, we just like uh, yeah, just license, we just kind of like a license plate. But the monkey, uh, monkey would look good in the middle. Kind of do like a shadow box or a light box kind of detail to bring focus to the monkey a bit. So, if when you say light box, are you thinking of having a window there? Well, I was thinking like if you, because you kind of already have this. If we just yep. made a plate for the back, basically oh, yeah. out of the mesh, yeah, that's yep. true, and kind of just put it, you know, there. And then yep. cut out, like Jesse was saying, all the way to that box. Yep. And then just have it open. Yes. And then you'd have kind of a shadow box effect because you'd mount that. So it would be set back in. Yeah. So you'd have a square cut out and then it would be set back. Yeah, set back in a bit. So. That's a great idea. Yeah. I like oh, it. I yeah. Yeah. think it's, it's a little different. Happen. French cleats. Good stuff. French people did more than one, two good things. <laughs> So we are officially doing this whole yes. section. Okay. So since we're using a scroll saw, you can take the blade out, which means that all you got to do is drill a hole. You don't have to make an incision like you do when you're using a jigsaw. Hey guys, welcome into my actual shop shop, <laughs> wood shop. Uh, this is my scroll saw. We're just kind of taking a look at it here. It's a uh, it's an Excalibur EX16 without getting into any of the high-end crazy industrial shop setup type scroll saws. It's up there. Uh, this is my favorite anyway. One of the best features of it in my opinion is the fact that you just loosen this. I don't want to change it because I set it to perfect 90 but you loosen this and then you just use this dial and that's what turns instead of the table. So this whole saw assembly will turn to do a bevel instead of having to try and use a workpiece like this on your table that moved. But yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. And it is really quiet and it's really smooth. I mean like it doesn't it doesn't bounce or anything. And it's got variable speed and all that fun too, depending on what you're cutting. It's good stuff. Where's it made? Oh, I don't remember. Do you have to order this, or where'd you get it through? Made in Taiwan. I bought it at Woodcraft, uh, eventually. <laughs> For a while, the only one that they had was the review, or not the review, the display one, but I know how us woodworkers are. We like to tinker with things <laughs> before we actually buy them, so I was like, yeah, I'm not going to pay retail for, for a you know, nice sample that's probably been used mm -hmm. by quite a few people. But yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. Been happy with it. The tension part of it is nice. And the other part that's really nice is that. Ah. <laughs> so you don't have to try and go to the bottom. Yeah. So it's really easy when you're trying to get it on, get it onto a workpiece.
nice. And then up in the top, it was a little hard to, it's not quite, this little piece isn't quite square to the front. Yeah. So you can see up here, I've been, I was nicking oh. this all the way across, and yet I still have a little bit of a gap. Yep. All right, what we have here is it just kind of measured out and made a little paper template because that's a lot easier than trying to bend the metal and cut it at the same time. So basically it just has the same contour as the front here. So it just follows the angles of the front and then it gives you the width, approximate width. I mean, I'll probably cut it outside of that because like I like to say, measure twice, cut once, and then sneak up on it anyway. He actually turned all of that on a lathe, which is kind of impressive. I was pretty excited when I got that. Looks like something the Vikings would use to make a ship. There you go. Because um, it's, to turn the mallet head itself, it, he had to put it in the lathe in three different positions. Because um, like there's one, there's on one of these ends, I don't know, if, yeah, that end. Yeah. There's, you can see there's three little holes. Yep. And those were, that's where the uh, dead center on the lathe was. Uh -oh. So the, for this one, you go from that hole to the same hole on the opposite side to turn this middle section. And then you go from that hole there to the top hole on the other side to turn this. And then you go from there to the center hole on this one to turn that. Did he make it one of like those push pedal lathes, like manual lathes? Uh, I doubt it. Because <laughs> <laughs> some of these guys use that though, the completely manual I want one. I want to make one. So what are you doing now? Now I'm using my template to kind of mark out where I'm going to cut. And I'm going slightly oversized again because it's a lot easier to a lot easier to sneak up on it than it is to hope that it actually works out on the first shot cuz I'm pretty sure we all know better. Perfect. I think that'll look pretty sweet. Yeah. To attach the mesh to the back side of the bezel, we've used Scotchweld DP190. This is a two-part epoxy adhesive. And this is a special applicator gum from 3M that squeezes the two individual tubes together at once. We don't have this spiraled applicator tip on it, so we just put it in a cup and used a mixed stick to apply the epoxy on, and we'll let that set for 24 hours. So the Honeycomb Modders mesh will need to cure with the epoxy at Mosquito's Place for the next 24 hours before it can go into the next stage of being painted matte black to match the rest of the honeycomb perforations on the chassis. Now, we're back at my shop here at MMPC Tech and I'm going to show you how I made the acrylic automotive sports car style louvers for the front door. So what we're looking at here is the door off the Origin Genesis and if you recall in the first video of this project vlog Captain Curry Sauce had suggested putting automotive style louvers in the front door. And I've created two of these. Here's one and here's the other. And the reason there's blue here is because these were created from scrap acrylic pieces that I had cut up. So it's always good to recycle spare materials if you can, right? Especially if you know if you're going to paint it. Now these pieces were bonded in the acrylic with Weld on number three, and the label is uh, deteriorating here a little bit. <laughs> so this is weld on three. This is uh, a bonding solution, epoxy for acrylic, and it works really fast. It's great. You can get this from Tap Plastics, and or just do a Google search for uh, any type of um, supplier that has plastics primarily. I took all the acrylic scrap that I had from another project and it was all 3 16 inch thick black opaque acrylic smoked acrylic and some blue acrylic scraps that I had measured out everything cut the pieces on a vertical saw and then I created a frame for the louvers to go inside of and I used the weld on 3 acrylic cement to bond the pieces together and all you have to do is just put a dab on either end and then hold the pieces together firmly for a few minutes and it helps if you can blow on them. I've got an air compressor that I use in the shop to help speed up the cure time and 
they bond together really strong. It's an amazing product and you can do a lot of cool stuff with acrylics when you use the Weld on 3 cement. What I'm gonna do here is cut these two openings that I've measured out and I've got them outlined of tape. And I'll be using a Dremel with a reinforced cutting wheel. This is one and a half inches. You can get these in the packs from MMPC Tech. I've got a small hand file here to clean up any jagged edges. And then what I'll do is I'll epoxy the louvers on the backs of the door using Scotchwell DP190, which is a two-part epoxy. Don't forget to wear some eye protection when doing a modification with a power tool like this. And these one and a half reinforced cutting wheels cut through this plastic fairly quickly. Do incision cuts one at a time versus trying to do one long cut, which is going to create the plastic to melt and it may ruin your straight line cuts if you're not careful. Once you're finished with the cuts, grab a hand file and go over the edges and corners. And you can also use some sandpaper to make sure the cuts are nice and clean and ready for the next stage, which is attaching the vents. Installing the second vent with the DP190 two-part epoxy. And with this applicator, normally there's a spiraled uh, tip to mix the epoxy together as you squeeze. But uh, every time you use that, it clogs it up. It's like a one-time only deal. And since I use this often on and off, uh, I've removed it and I just take a uh, pop rivet and use it as a little stir stick to combine the two-part epoxy together. And I'll just go around the frame that will bond onto the back side of the bezel door. The first one is attached and it's on real nice and tight. Came up pretty good. Doesn't look like I need to use any body filler to fill any gaps in, which is good news. I may not even need to use the uh, clamps to hold this down in place. So I've got the bezel door masked off with 3M233 Plus tape. This tape is great. It's very strong, but it's uh, also low tack and won't leave a sticky residue on anything when you use it. And I've scuffed all the vents here and I'm going to apply a primer coat over the vents and um, then we should be ready to bring this door with the rest of the pieces over to Brad's paint shop so we can start talking about the custom color finish. I'm applying a primer coat over the installed vents and we'll let this cure for about an hour or so and then we'll peel off. You can follow progress of this project on the modzoo.com forums. If you go there and just look for Genesis of a Mod Monkey in the project log subform. We're posting photo updates as we work on things and discussing what we're going to do. And you can participate with us, ask any questions, especially if you're considering buying an Origin Genesis Full Tower or the Millennium. Pop in the form. Say hello, ask us questions, share your own project. So the next step is to go over to Brad's paint shop and start discussing the custom color coat, which the uh, agreement right now is candy apple red. House of color candy apple red. So there's the bezel door. This is actually going to get a custom finish, so it's not going to be black like this, but at least now you can see the vents as one color. Then also, I've modified the back plate. So there's an opening for the vents to breathe back here. Thank you for watching part two of our MZ2K 
case mod with the Origin PC Genesis, the genesis of a mod monkey. And until the next video comes out, if it's a few weeks because we, we've been busy, you can go to the modzoo.com forums and you can watch our project there. We'll have photo updates in between the videos or any other news regarding the status of the build. I want to thank everybody who is a new subscriber to this channel. We share content from mmpctech.com and the staff from themodzoo.com. I periodically have these vlogs where I go a little bit off center from the computer realm into just cool stuff that's happening with my friends around me that are always up to doing something interesting. So until the next video, we'll see you soon.